People deluded, how are you all doing? I'm back again. Thank you very much for tuning back in. Now, yesterday afternoon, Arsenal obviously got off to the best possible start to the season. A victory away from home and a clean sheet. I mean, maybe this season will be different. You've seen the Premier League's talking points. You've seen VAR and all of these things. And that's probably for another vid. But for right now, I'd like to speak about some of Emre's comments in regards to the post game, his post game conference. I really liked some of the things he said. One phrase in particular kind of sums up what I mean by being proactive rather than reactive. And no clues, the tactics board is here. But cracking on people, we'll start off with the not less relevant bits, but I just took the bits I found encouraging people. Firstly, on what he made of Reese Nelson and Willock's performances. He thought they were good. Let me speak about what he said now. Good. They are young. They need to get confidence to get experience, but we need to be winning. We are helping them, but pushing them. And our demand is a very big demand. They need to do one process, and sometimes it's like today, and sometimes it's maybe starting in the bends. Above all, they are going to be with us. And that's what I like to hear. Obviously, Joe Willock and Reese Nelson, they've got a lot of potential, but they're no way away, they're a long way away from being regulars first names on the team sheet sort of thing i hope they develop into that i want them to you lot know me i'm always bigging up themselves bigging up them players and whatnot they took their chances in pre-season and they were rewarded with a start and it's good bravery from Embry because imagine we lost to newcastle which will happen at times they will as much as i like Embry and i believe in Embry and whatnot there will be times he's a man he's the manager that the selection he has a part to play for as poor as some of the players are but um I felt he showed bravery. It's good for the players because they might have young players might always feel and we always feel, yeah, they're involved in pre-season, he's he's there, they're playing and whatnot. Anyone can play pre-season. It's about getting chances in the Prem. If we lost, people might not have looked at Nelson and Joe Willett, but they definitely would have looked at our bench, looked at the starting lineup and said, Well go on, like what's going on? Why did we lose that? So it's good for me, good for Emery to show bravery and repay the players' faith because it shows these players that they will be given chances if they work hard and that's it, it. That's good for Martinelli. Obviously, he didn't really have long enough, but he made his debut. Nelson and Joe were the players in question, um, and, and whatnot. That's good for the players. That and obviously Saka, I believe he travelled. He might have injuries and whatnot, but Saka's in there. That's good for the players as well that aren't necessarily involved or a long way from the first team because they can see a manager is willing to play them. And for me, we're Arsenal Football Club. We need to give young players chances. We need young players coming through the doors at under eights and progressing to the first team. Not everyone can do it, but that's a hallmark of our identity, people. And it's good that we're sticking to them values. And like he said, obviously, Joe Willock and Nelson, they're, they're trying to develop and whatnot. You saw by the 60th minute, both of them were knackered. So if they want to be true professionals playing for a top six club they need to get ready to they need to get ready for two games in a week three games in 10 days because they played quite well for me but you saw they were knackered obviously they're rough around edges there's a couple of moments Joe will possibly could have done better Nelson's decision making at times can be better but they're promising players and it's nice to see they're part of the first team clearly I mean whether they start against Burnley is another story I don't think either player will I think they both deserve to but I just think we'll see Pepe, Lacazette, possibly Ceballos and all the players that the fans are begging to see will see them start at home but they both repaid the manager's faith and right now on this Monday morning they've at least done themselves the justice of being in contention they're part of the squad it's down to them to take their chances they're still developing obviously you've got young Reese Nelson he's made 20 odd appearances 17 professional competitive appearances for Arsenal now that's about 37 Premier League, 37 top flight games sorry so how much is that really that's just about a season under his belt yesterday Joe Willock that was his third starting game in the Premier League and um, I think he's he's played a decent amount of times in the Europa League and whatnot but they're still developing um, they did quite well they didn't look out of place and Joe Willock's just got that aura of being a Premier League footballer, man. He belongs here, man. And this is what I mean by patience is overstated but underrated because not everybody needs a loan. I do think Joe Willock, if he wasn't going to be given a chance like he saw against Newcastle or playing pre-season, he needs to go out on loan or permanently leave purely because, as you've seen, he's too good for 23's football. Um, but some possibly if him or McTominay and players like that I made a video but if they go out on loan sometimes they don't necessarily get seen and brought back because they will look it's took him a while to develop physically and he's never looked back now that it's clipped into place. Moving on from young um, Willock and Nelson though, um, probably more of an indication in regards to our players that whoever you want to see or players you'd expect to see. Um, he obviously was asked about the missing defenders and the performance of Chambers. Now I feel Callum Chambers did quite well. I feel Chambers, obviously, when you look at holding, Saliba's not here, but Saliba to come. David Luiz is a good is a good ball player. 
Um, obviously, defending is is about defending, but I just feel some of these defenders they potentially look more gracious than him and whatnot. But what I like about Chambers is he doesn't try and do things above his pay grade. Yes, he has to ball play and whatnot. He's at Arsenal. Emery likes to ball play. He can do that, but you don't see him trying passes that are not in his locker. He keeps it simple, and I think he had a very good game against Newcastle. You can only play what's in front of you. Chambers did his thing. Remains to be seen in terms of what standing you'll have in the team. Personally, I think he's a reliable option and backup. That's what we need. Not everyone has to be a star. Of course, I would love two quality centre-halves, but equally, I think Chambers can step in if required. He's still developing. He'll have bad games, but I just feel Chambers... If you, Chambers has had some good games when he has been given chances at Arsenal. And some people need to be consistent and reliable, and that's very two under, that's underestimated traits at Arsenal. If Chambers, when steps in, can be reliable, then that's cool. Um, and he definitely deserves to start against Burnley. Whether he'll start is a different thing. You'd be you'd imagine Louise would come in, possibly Louise and Socrates. I think it should be Chambers and Louise just for that game because I feel Chambers has earned his spot. Obviously, Socrates is more of a senior member, but I don't necessarily feel he had the best of games against against um, Newcastle. Not that he was terrible or anything, but um, Emre's comments is. Really, last year for Callum Chambers was a very good year because he played all the games with Fulham. They played him as a centre-half in a three, in a two, and they also played him in midfield. From pre-season, he deserved to play in the first 11 today, and he was very focused with Socrates, who was also very serious. I want... I want to have I want to have very competitive players in each position with Louise with Holding when he is coming back to help us with training reg on a regular basis and playing with the 23s because he'll play again tomorrow. Now he's obviously referring to today our 23s play against Blackburn Rovers. Um, so Holding, like we did against Watford behind closed doors, will get more first team football. Um, Moving on, he says, because he'll play again tomorrow. And with Hector Bellerin, one month more. Today, we also had Kalajinac out and the injury to Kieran Turney. I think we can and we will want to become stronger defensively, but above all, being one defensive team. Now, his name dropped, obviously, he name dropped Louise. Louise has had, I think he did make some other comments about Louise. Um, Louise hasn't had that long to train and whatnot and some other things, but obviously, he wants competitive options. Socrates, Chambers, Holding and obviously Louise Mavroponis is out for six to eight weeks, but I did find it interesting how he didn't he didn't name him. Normally, Emre names these players regardless of they're injured or not. Like you've seen, um, we know Mavroponis sadly has been robbed because of injuries, been robbed of playing time, been robbed of being able to make significant strides. Will he be named in the Europa League squad? I don't know because he's out for six to eight weeks. I believe on paper. Technically, we have to leave somebody out. We've got players that will probably leave, like Mustafi and Nelneni, but I think technically we have to leave a player out if the squad stays as it is. I could be wrong, um, but yeah. And what I really like the most, and sorry for delaying, why, why the point pur purpose of this is because Emre's summed up what I'm trying to say in my videos. This ain't to scale, but we'll see. Um, we'll, we'll, I'll show you. Where is my... Oh, why don't I ever have these things prepared, man? Apologies, people. I had to grab a pen. Um, Emre said, on Aubameyang scoring already, or he was asked about Aubameyang, and he said, but we want to start defending with Aubameyang and we want to start attacking with Leno. That is what I liked, people. We'll carry on with the others, but that is what I mean. We are one team. I feel when we talk about Arsenal's defensive mistakes, our defence gets, right, quite rightly so, a lot of critique. Some players sadly get scapegoated despite the fact that they're poor. But I just feel midfielders and and, and the strikers, at times, they get away with it. Because you look at Liverpool last season, City last season, it's one unit. For as much as you praise Bernardo Silva, Sterling, all of these players for their attacking output and the, and, and Sil the other silver as well, Defensively, they're busting a gut. Look at the distance they're covering. And at times, I feel fires could have been put out by our defence. I mean, by our attacking options before they've got to our defence. Now, our attack starts with Leno, people. It, our attack literally starts with that. What do you typically see, people? Leno receives it. Our centre-half's pull. You might see our full-backs up there. This is an attacking mid. But you might see Xhaka come into this spot. And then we'll move from there. And it will gradually filter up to the, to the top of the goal in an ideal world. But it's more defending which, which gets me. Because if you look at this, people, if we remove these three attackers now, and let's just say the keeper has the ball here, and he has the option of that, he can play this centre-half, he can play that, he can play that. From there, these lot could obviously play their midfielders, play it in here, runs can be made off the ball by this guy, etc., etc. Chances can develop. If these midfielders really have bravado, they can get on the ball. But you can discourage a lot of that, people, simply by... 
pressing first and foremost pressing immediately this is the most basic one but we've pressed immediately now if these are city they will be welcome to play under pressure and still pop it but nine times out of ten teams will go oh my god it's hot potato they'll give it back to the keeper and they'll hoof it in an ideal world if they've got a good target man they'll be able to do it but it will just come back to us because we outnumbered them here again not to scale they ain't got no strikers people do you get um, it will come back to them but at times I also feel it's not necessarily about pressing at times not not just I'm, not, I'm just making a point I'm not saying it's Aubameyang but a man might press a striker might press but the ball goes out here and our striker might think oh my job's done now but the ball comes from here goes down there there's a midfield runner next thing you know there's an effort at goal these things could have been put out simply by okay let me press them and force them to kick it long or let's squeeze and things like that um, it's a well it's a, we need to be a well drilled or, um, organised unit and I really liked that comment from Emre about um, defence starts with Obama and clearly not just him but the attacking options that are on the field at that time moment in time um, and what not I really liked that comment moving on from that he said to restart but we need to start we need to start defending with Obamian and we need to start attacking with Leno. We need to create good combinations, good situations to create good chances. And after each player has his quality to score, to do the pass, to assist and to do the job defensively. Obamian is our scorer with Lacazette, with Pepe, with Reese Nelson, with Mickey and other players. And really today I think every player worked very well. He scored Obamian, but I think it was because every player worked together. That's what I like to hear from Emre. I feel Mkhitaryan's got to show something this year. I feel Mkhitaryan, I like Mkhitaryan. He's a good technical footballer. He's just way too inconsistent. Um, obviously, him and Iwobi's futures don't correlate, but you've seen Iwobi leave. You see someone who is, what, 20, 27, any, I don't know his age, but anything from 28 to 30. I don't know how old Mkhitaryan is. I think he's 30. Big money wages. One of the, based on that logic, should be showing something. And... Um, we're in number seven and he's played significantly in pre-season. He, he started today, well yesterday, he got 83 minutes which baffled me as well but ended the day I'm not the manager. He needs to repay and raise faith because he could be the next one out the door. He's one of them that we're looking at as mm, maybe next year you might leave and to be honest regardless of what you think of him, Mezzi Ozil, obviously Mustafi and whatnot, these players for their, whether it's their wages or inconsistent performances are going to be moved on. So I hope for Mkhitaryan's sake he, he he pulls it, he fixes up and whatnot, man. He did have some good moments, but I feel for someone who's such a technically based player, he was gifting the ball away to the opposition on a far too regular basis. But um, yeah, I did think there was, is there another comment? Yeah, people, this is the last one about new signings. Um, which I felt to kind of just speak on because obviously we wanted to see in an ideal world obviously when we remove reality players have got different fitness return dates and whatnot because we would have liked he's not a new signing but Torreira and obviously the new signings to play but moving on to Debbie said when we asked about them he said I explained yesterday that the circumstances are different David Luiz did okay did, did sorry did pre-season with another team and he is okay to play physically but he only trained completely with us yesterday so clearly Luis could have started and whatnot but and they don't want to put the pressure on him and all of these sort of things let him gel and 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 just just take it easy he was on the bench if it required he would have played but home debut let him let him train with the team a bit more and chemistry and all of these things he only did 30 minutes with them on 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 on, on Friday he's gone on to say um he said but he only trained with us yesterday. On Friday, he did 30 minutes with us. I was thinking to give him confidence to work together because they're working well together, Socrates and Chambers. So he felt to repay their confidence and let them play. Um, in regards to Pepe, he said, Pepe came one week ago and physically he needs to get his best fitness to be ready to play at 100% for 90 minutes. I think that today, 20 minutes is good for him and Sabaris is in the middle because he came before Pepe, but he got an injury and he stopped training, but he needs to know the Premier League. So today it was important for him and for us. I also use Reese Nelson and Willock because they deserve to be with us and to give them confidence, which can help us. It's the same with Martinelli. He played the last 10 minutes because he deserved it. Again, he played well, quite well in pre-season, so it's nice to see the manager is backing up the, the the, 
is backing up his words and ultimately giving these young players chances because that's all they want, people. These players are not going to be ready. They don't need to play every game, but they need chances. I honestly believe Joel Willock and Nelson can develop into first-team players, regular um, first-team players for us. I'm not here to say they can be world-class or not, but I know Arsenal players when I see them and I think Nelson and Joel have a good chance. They're still developing. They're going to have terrible games. They're going to have great games as they still struggle or, or, or not even struggle is not the right word. They still strive to become consistent players and give a consistent base level of performance but for now people there's nothing more to add i'm going to get out of here deluded thank you for watching